guys, Nerdking101 here, and today we are going to be discussing and talking about Shang Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I've honestly always called him Shang Chi, but I will try to call him not Shang Chi for the rest of the video. Honestly, I've always called him Shang Chi. It's a bad habit. I didn't know it would pronounce Shang Chi until I saw the movie. So for that, I you have my apologies. But, I'm also sorry for the lack of editing in this video. Normally, I try to make my reviews highly edited and less their manga chapter reviews. But, to be very blunt with you, I have a gala. The Children's Tumor Foundation Gala is this week. I'm also leaving to go on a trip. We're going to Jamaica, me and my family, for the holidays. And, I'm also trying to get more actual videos done, recorded, and edited. I'm really trying to build up a backlog so we can keep having weekly videos now that we've hit 1k and just with everything going on I just don't have time to edit a full movie review so I figured we just sit down in front of the camera and talk about Shang-Chi which to be honest I thought wasn't great but why don't we start with what I liked about it first of all the characters in this movie are incredibly fun and they're incredibly likable. I have no problem with Katie, Shang-Chi, or any of the other characters. They're all great. The Mandarin dad guy is great. But I think this movie's biggest flaw is that while well, it has the best action in the MCU, I want to be very clear about that, this movie had easily dethroned Winter Soldier. This is a kung fu movie, and it looks fantastic. It's also very Good looking. Now, note, I'm not really going to the movie theaters at the moment, so I haven't seen Eternals yet, but this movie is great. Like, so I, I can't gauge Eternals, but everything up until Xiang Chi, this is the best looking MCU movie. It looks great. The fight scenes in this movie are mind boggling. I was flabbergasted. You, I was watching it with my friend last night. We were sitting on my couch in my living room and we were watching the movie. And I remember just sitting there, jaw dropped, like a, a gasp. I was like, holy crap. When he had the first fight scene on the bus, I was mind blown. Also, I'm much more like his casual look compared to his costume. I think when he's in a fight scene, the casual look with the jacket and the way he's like, mm. I think that looks so cool. Like the scene when he's like this or whatever on the train. I'm not on the train, on the bus. It's so cool. The bus fight scene is my favorite part of the movie. I love it. Him and Cassie are great. I like that there's no romance between him and Cassie. That's another major plus. The fact that there's a male and female lead in this movie and there's no romance. There's a couple points where I'm like, are they setting something up? But I don't think they are. It seems like it's purely platonic. They're just really good friends. I like that there's no drama with her finding out about his backstory. She's more just annoyed. She's like, what the hell, dude? But it's very like finding out your friend lied and being like, what the hell, man? Well, you had your reason, and then they move on. She's not like an overly emotional woman character who's like, oh, you lied to me. Oh, I'm so No, none of that. She's like, eh, I get it. But no, it's really good. Um, The backstory with him and his sister is great. I forget his sister's name. But, and I think that's part of the problem. This movie does a really bad job at making all the characters memorable. Like, Shang-Chi, Katie, his, and them, they're great leads. The villain is great. But, like, it doesn't do a great job at making you remember everybody's name and who they are. Because, about midway through the movie... They go to this, like, fight club that his sister is running, and him and his sister meet up. When the Mandarin captures them in the midway point of the movie, or then they capture them, like, invites them back to the compound from the Ten Ring, the movie goes downhill immediately. Because from that point on, with, with, with the exception of one scene where they bring back Trevis, Trevor, Trevis, the actor who played the Mandarin in Iron Man 3, who he picked up that part of the movie. He's hilarious. But when they bring him back, He's hilarious. He's really, really funny. I really, really like him. He's really funny. But that entire sequence, the pacing, like the pacing during the first half and the very finale is great. But from the capture to like when his, the Mandarin's armies arrive in the village, the entire movie comes to a screeching halt. 
Like the entire movie stops. It just stops. Like nothing. It moves at a snail pace. Like there's this dinner scene that lasts way too long. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to do the characterization well. But it's so boring. Like, when they were in the village, halfway through, I was like, I am so bored. Also, another small criticism is the mother's death scene, I feel like should have been way earlier in the movie. It feels very tacked on where it is. And considering it's the main motivation for all the characters, I feel like it should have been earlier in the movie. Because when you get the death scene of the mother, it feels very just thrown on. I, I really do think, like, the first beginning of the movie, up until they go to the Fight Club, and the final act are stellar. The combat is great. The choreography is, as I've said, phenomenal. Now, th we do encounter my, a big issue I have with the actual story outside of the pacing in the middle, which is, I didn't like that this beautifully choreographed kung fu movie devolved into a Marvel CGI fest at the end. Like, there's the dragon, and there's this monster of darkness, and then, like, Shang-Chi and him have a fight with the rings, and then the, the Mandarin, like, loses the ring to Shang-Chi, and Shang-Chi, like, tosses them to the ground, and the Mandarin raises his hand, and I was like, are we gonna get, like, a one-on-one -on -one choreographed hand-to-hand, -hand, like, jujitsu battle? Like a Nar like, like like the finale in, in Naruto when Naruto and Sake had their final fight and it just pure hand to hand combat. Are we gonna get something like that? And then he dies to the monster who takes his soul and it becomes a CGI fest. And I just think it's a tremendous disappointment to see a movie that excels at hand to hand combat and choreography. It's a kung fu movie resort to basically the same kind of finale every Marvel movie has. I'm not normally the kind of person who complains about CGI fest at the end of these movies because I like seeing superheroes fight giant monsters, but in the beginning of the movie, I honestly forgot I was watching a Marvel movie. Like, it, I just thought I was watching a super-powered kung fu movie with some degree of super-powered magic thrown in there. It felt very early Naruto. Like, very much like the early Naruto stuff, where, like, clearly there's some power, but the hand-to-hand -hand combat just felt like regular hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I was very disappointed to see it at the end just become a giant, massive CGI monstrosity fest. And I remember at the end just being like, okay, like, I see what we're doing. But, like, this isn't what the movie was good at. This isn't what I liked about it. And when he got the Teg Rings, I was like, no. Because I don't want him to have powers. Like, because I think that takes away from the fact that the best part about the movie was the choreography. Like, the best part of it was all the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I think if you could do anything, it would be to take the Teg Rings away from him. Which sucked. I also, comic book readers will notice they did change what the Teg Rings do. They did. Because the Ten Rings are basically budget infinity stones in the comic, or budget infinity gems. And I can imagine they didn't want to have another thing where the main character puts things on his fingers that are these magic gems on his fingers and then can manipulate facets of reality. I can imagine they didn't want to do that again. So I'm glad they changed that, but they're also very CGI heavy, and I didn't like that. I would have liked way more hand to hand combat in the end. Um, and really. That's about all I had to say on it. I think the problem is that the fight scenes are great. The characters are fun. But the story is weak in my opinion. And I don't have much more to say about it. Like, besides the fact that it lags in the middle, I think it's really fun. The post credit scene, though, was really cool. It did feel long. I will say, the post credit scene felt like two or three scenes put together. It really did. Because... The post credit scene is them out to eat with the same friend. Wong shows up, he takes them away. The whole thing felt really long, but I really, really liked it. The post credit scene with Wong and Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner was cool. It also confirms that this movie takes place very soon after Endgame because Bruce isn't healed. We also learned that he's human again, which is odd. Fascinating, I don't know what that's about. Maybe we'll learn about that in She-Hulk. 
But uh, I don't have a ton to say on it, to be honest with you. I really don't. Like, I don't have a lot to say on this movie. Like, I've said basically everything I can say. Um, if I had to rate this movie, this is a tough thing to rate. But if I had, I'm, I'm really struggling, if you can't tell, to get to the rating. Hey, so the recording just stopped. I apologize. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep that in there. I think that's pretty funny. The recording just randomly stopped. Good thing I'm looking at my screen. Oh my god. But yeah, if I had to rate this movie, I would rate it like a 7 out of 10. I think the first act is basically perfect. And then I think it really suffered from that middle period and the CGI at the end. But I think the characters are, are I think the characters... And the choreography are a 10 out of 10. It's also really funny. Like, there's a couple of moments in the movie where I actually, especially in the early part, where I burst out laughing. Um, I also like seeing all, all the influ influences and part things and expressions of Chinese culture in it. I thought that was great. But yeah, so I give it like a 7 out of 10. I think it's really good. But I think the ending just feels very, very generic. I think the middle is very slow, and the ending is very, very, like, generic Marvel. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Ring, where I talk about what I thought about it. Um, if you want more comic book stuff, subscribe for more. I'm planning to talk about some of the future MCU shows in a future video, the shows on Disney+. Plus. Particularly, I want to make a Miss Marvel video. I also have some books about some of the current DC comics that are coming out right now. Where I want to talk about a couple things, particularly Dark Knights of Steel. But yeah, if you're interested in any of that stuff, subscribe for more videos. I also mainly focus on talking about anime and manga. Particularly shonen stuff like My Hero Academia, One Piece. And I also have the Maven Galleon and Avatar stuff coming. So, yeah, if you're interested in any of that, subscribe for more videos. Like the video if you enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts on the movie in the comments section. Check out my Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. There's also my PayPal, which you can click on if you want to support the channel. And of all the else, guys, have a great day.